Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for coming to the channel. Oh my gosh, what the heck am I going to do with all these uh, quickly growing fry from my live bears? <laughs> I've begun to no longer try and raise all the babies that I'm getting from the 32 gallon live bear tank, which um, it sits on top of this on the rack system. And this is just the latest uh, assemblage of fish that I was able to raise up to this juvenile state. Pretty much all of them are about, I don't know, five, six, seven weeks old. They grow fast, uh, these mollies and platies and sword tails. It's primarily black mollies, about half standard fin. Uh, the other leer tail, there's a beautiful looks like a fat female already with the showing the leer tail um, and there's a red molly right there uh, modeled color kind of pretty we'll see it's hard to tell that with the red and uh, yellow strains what they're ultimately going to look like and I tend to give these fish away or trade them before I ever find out obviously with the black mollies you can pretty much see what you're gonna get. They just get to be bigger versions of what you're looking at right now. Um, and it's more of a grab bag with the other colored fishes. Look at that one almost looks albino. For all I know, maybe it is. Uh, I, you know, I just don't know. They're, they're fantastic fish. I'm just struggling to maintain them in the small five gallon tank. The readings when I do the water test are obviously not very good. Um, high nitrates, uh, unacceptable levels of ammonia, and some nitrite. But the fish don't seem to mind. They grow. They grew up in it, and they're causing the mess, and they're living in it. And as I said, I, I mean, I'm taking out a dozen fish every week and bringing them to my LFS for trade-in or anything like that. I'm happy to uh, trade with any of you out there. I'll give you some, to be honest with you. If you're in the Chicagoland area, these are beautiful fish. I take really good care of them. And I'm trying to, to do the right thing. Uh, I wish I hadn't sort of committed to uh, live bears, but you know, once you, once you uh, open that bottle, the genie's out and, and that's it. I have these beautiful adult versions of what you're looking at here in the other tank. I've shown those uh, gorgeous fish and you can see why I bought them. They were all the best versions of, of their species. And so their babies, some of them are uh, throwing the best versions of their species and some seem more ordinary. But I'm not here to judge fish quality. I mean, every fish is sort of worth the same to me. And so I'm just speculating and what the hell am I gonna do, right? Besides what I am doing, which is I take out all the plants, most of the hardscape, I catch them all out, and then I bring them to an LFS and hopefully get 10 or 20 bucks of uh, trade-in value for something in the store. And if the proprietor doesn't want to trade, I just honestly lower the rate and, to, and maybe give it away uh, as a token of goodwill for a future purchase. And just because, you know, that's, that, that's what we do. Uh, I'm not a professional. I'm just like you, a hobbyist, and I want to talk about these fish and show them off and raising them and breeding them is one of the most exciting parts of the hobby but there are consequences and you're looking at about 50 of them right here so let's talk about this kind of kooky tank uh in the back which is neat you can see a group of pygmy coriadoras they're all fat and happy despite the uh, rough parameters of this tank's water um i you know these are supposed to be more challenging in terms of your water quality. Well, honestly, the water quality in here is unacceptable, and I admit it. And all I can do is 80% um, water changes once a week. Other than that, I mean, I got to keep some stability in the tank. And I, after all, I'm not losing a single fish, including those pygmy coriadoras. 
I have some wonderful apple snails or mystery snails. There's a nice one there. Where's the monster? There's a monster in here. That's not it, but that's pretty big too. Uh, I can't believe I'm not finding the Goliath. That's what I call them, but there's a giant monstrous mystery snail in here. And they're so cool because at that size, their appendages, their foot, which is a golden color, is just outstanding to look at. Um, very cool for such a big and odd creature. They have uh, a certain elegance to them, a certain lovely beauty, despite being a big damn snail. One of the ways to offset the nitrates and other and the ammonia and you know just the foulness of the water, the nutrient heavy water from all the waste these fish are producing is is live plants. And so I've got uh, uh, the easy fast growing kind because the faster the plant grows, the more it's gonna uptake nutrients from the water. I have Brazilian uh, pennywort some uh, lemonphilia sessiflora in that little hanging pot uh, water sprite there and floating and then i've got the uh, pothos which i've just arranged this is sort of a new addition because i keep uh, emerged plants in all my tanks but i hadn't done it in this one i don't know why maybe because it's a small tank maybe because i also was thinking of once i get rid of these fish to not uh, continue the process and rather just feed all the new babies to my display tank. As cruel as that sounds, it's just, I mean, it's live fish food, same as when you buy baby uh, brine shrimp or adult brine shrimp or black worms, they're all God's creatures. And so we feed those without it a second thought. And so baby fish aren't really any different. And honestly, if you go to any pet store, they'll sell you feeder fish as well so while it's no fun to feed uh, leertail black molly babies and german black sword tail babies and uh, privately bred platy stock to uh, your other fish it's probably my best option moving forward even no matter what i do with these fish and they're looking at a new home probably in the next five or ten days as soon as I can, because clearly it's overcrowded in this aquarium. But as I said, I've I've never found a dead fish in here, uh, and you know, and I do an extensive cleaning every week. So, go figure, right? There's the there's Goliath. Look at those tendrils. Isn't that something? What an amazing creature. Sensed the camera and it recoiled in. But for something so big and cumbersome and a bottom feeder. Look at how smooth and angelic that foot is. Unbelievable, now that snail is pushing uh, two inches, it's at least two inches, not including uh, the length of the antenna, which adds another inch. And he's just tooling around fat and happy. Uh, one of the ways I've, uh, and this is a great tip, I've been meaning to do it for a long time, but crushing eggshells uh, you know, make scrambled eggs in the morning, keep the shells and smash them with a mortar and pestle. And then those white particles are pieces from the shell that I've dropped in here. So these snails will get calcium and that really helps them uh, thrive, especially when it's, you know, there's nothing in this tank that would provide them the necessary nutrients to keep their shells intact. I found that in all my tanks over time, snails, the shells start to degrade. And, you know, I was pulling out the, the empty shells after they died. And usually I would find them when they had already been picked clean. And then I would just throw them out and buy a few more. But, you know, that's, that's not right, honestly. And it's not that difficult to sort out what you can do to keep your snails happy. And one of the things that I'm doing is adding calcium by uh, smashed eggshells. You just clean the eggshells after you use them and then dry them out and smash them, smash them, smash them into small particulates. And I'm considering mixing spirulina in with them to entice these snails and 
If you have shrimp, shrimp too, shrimp will benefit from the calcium and helps them molt. Uh, and that's what a lot of people do the crushed eggshell uh, trick for, but it's also great for snails. So a, a lot of your invertebrates will benefit from added calcium. Um, let's point out, there's one of the German black sword tails right there. Its tail hasn't begun, but I can clearly tell that that's what that is. Those uh, sword tails, the tail literally took a year before it, it became pronounced. And then once it started growing, the one I have in my other tank, it's like an inch and a half long, the tail. And I can just tell that's what this fish is from some the way its eye color is the white spot on its top, its body shape. It's more of a missile than a platy, which is a little bit more kind of a chubby uh, fish or a molly. Like you can see the difference if you study like these sort of round belly uh, platies and mollies. It's mostly mollies. I don't even, there's a platy right there. There's a tuxedo platy. So, um, big difference and then of course there's the gorgeous leer tail um, the most valuable fish in here probably maybe the german black sword tails but those leer tail black mollies are so iconic and fabulous uh, you know maybe i'll just keep a four in this tank and aquascape it proper i don't know what do you guys think just wanted to share because i'm not really gonna film this tank a whole lot because it's not a proper aquascape it's just kind of a holding tank but it looks okay under those circumstances live plants will definitely rectify a lot of uh, what ails the tank in more ways than one including just the way they look um, the green of a live plant there's some hornwort by the way i'd love to get that really going strong because i have water sprite in my other tanks and while i love it it'd be fun to have a dominant plant species in here and, and hornwort is the go-to even more so than water sprite for breeders and people who want to remove uh, nutrients from their water for the fast growing plant and something the fry can hi uh, hide in if you're a breeder uh, that's not the issue here i you know the fry are all that's in here and these are all young adults there's very few teeny tinies anymore uh, maybe a few but that's it, folks. As always, keep your hands in the tank and chow for now.